and welcome to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. In these days between Ascension and Pentecost, we gather with the disciples in the upper room, waiting for the Spirit to transform the church around the world. In today's gospel, Jesus prays for his followers and for their mission in his name. Amid religious, social, and economic divisions, we seek the unity that Jesus had with his Father. Made one in baptism, we go forth to live our faith in the world, eager for the unity that God intends for the whole human family. So I invite you to get comfortable wherever you are, whenever you're joining us, as we sing, pray, and hear God's word. We're so glad you're here. Now, let's worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you showered us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water of creation, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty, and give us the life only you can give, to be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. O God of glory, your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Acts, chapter 1, verses 6 through 14. Today's reading is part of the introduction into the narrative of the outpouring of the Spirit on Pentecost. These verses tell of the risen Lord's conversation with the disciples on the eve of his ascension, in which he promises that they will receive the power of the Holy Spirit. The reading begins. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, Suddenly, two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come by the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John, and James, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, son of Epheus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is an excerpt from Psalm 68 and includes verses 1 through 10 and verses 32 through 35. Sing to God who rides upon the clouds. The psalm begins, Let God arise and let God's enemies be scattered. 
Let those who hate God flee. As smoke is driven away, so you should drive them away. As the wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God. Sing praises to God's name. Exalt the one who rides the clouds. I am is that name. Rejoice before God in your holy habitation. O God, you are a father to orphans, defender of widows. You bring the solitary a home and bring forth prisoners into freedom. But the rebels shall live in the desert places. O God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a bountiful rain, O God. You restored your inheritance when it languished. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. You ride in the heavens, O God, in the ancient heavens. You send forth your voice, your mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose strength is in the skies. How wonderful you are in the holy places, O God of Israel, giving strength and power to your people. Blessed be God. Sing to God, who rides upon the clouds. The second reading is from 1 Peter, verses 12 through 14, and chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. Our faith in Christ does not make us immune from the scorn of others. Nevertheless, we are to resist the designs of evil when we experience disparagement from others, because we trust God's grace will strengthen and guide us. The reading begins. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fear or ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary the devil prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the night before his crucifixion, Jesus prays to his heavenly Father, asking that those who continue his work in this world will live in unity. The Gospel reading begins. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. 
I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's pray. Holy God, open our ears to hear you, open our eyes to see you, and open our hearts to know you. And let all God's people say, Amen. Well, we've reached the seventh Sunday of Easter, and it's hard to believe that after today, the 50-day season of Easter will be over. But not to worry, because Easter is never really over. We are Easter people, and we never stop living in the light of the resurrection. That being said, I do want to give you a heads up about some festival Sundays that are coming up on the church calendar. Next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, the day we celebrate the birthday of the church. In honor of that celebration, we typically wear red. Now, I know we're not gathering in person, but I still want you to wear red. And no, not just because it's my favorite color, but because that is the color of the day for Pentecost. And wouldn't it be great to know that on the birthday of the church, no matter where we are worshiping, that we are all wearing red in honor of that celebration. So please, I invite you to wear red next Sunday for Pentecost. I do want to remind all of you, if you haven't already heard, that on Thursday, May 28th, I'm going to be having some surgery. And that means I'm going to be out of commission recovering for a little while. The blessing of doing everything online right now means that you don't have to miss out on anything because I'm recovering from surgery. We are going to still have our normal schedule. On Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7.30 p.m., we'll still have our story time. On Wednesdays at 11.30 and 6.45, we'll still have morning and evening devotions. And on Sunday mornings, we'll still have worship. It's amazing that we're able to keep up with all of these things, even when I'm out of commission for a little while. I've also been really blessed with lots of folks to help cover for me while I'm out, too. So we're still going to have all of our normal Zoom events. We'll still have Holy Happy Hour on Tuesday nights at 8. We'll still have Coffee and Conversation on Thursday mornings at 11. We'll still have Kids Zoom and Teen Zoom on Sundays after worship. And of course, as usual, everything that we record will be available on Facebook, our YouTube channel, and our website, www.colleenemanuel.com. But I want to let you in on something really exciting. Not just is our schedule going to be the same, but we're going to have some very special guests providing sermons for us while I'm out. Next Sunday for Pentecost, Bishop Eric Gronberg will be providing the sermon. Bishop Gronberg is the Bishop of the Northern Texas, Northern Louisiana Synod. For Holy Trinity Sunday, Bishop Eaton will be providing our sermon. Bishop Eaton is the presiding bishop of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, our churchwide body, and she's providing a sermon for the entire ELCA. What an amazing gift to get to hear Bishop Eaton preach. And all you'll have to do is show up like normal for our worship. And her worship uh, portion, the sermon, will be included right there for you along with everything else. For the second Sunday of Pentecost, our assistant to the bishop for the Northern Texas, Northern Louisiana Synod, Pastor Chris Toski, will be providing the sermon for that day. So you're going to get to hear some amazing preachers while I'm out. And I'm hoping I'll get a chance to tune in as well. If you have any questions or anything at all, please feel free to reach out. You all know how to get a hold of me. I do invite you to pray for me and my family and for all those who will care for me uh, during and following my surgery. Thank you for those who have already reached out and offer your prayers. I very much appreciate them. Now, with all of that behind us, let's move on and take a deeper look at John's gospel for today. This story takes place the night before the crucifixion according to John. And what is Jesus doing in the story that we hear? He's praying for unity. He is praying for unity, not just among the disciples, but for the whole world. The night before he gets crucified, that's what he's focusing on. Not on himself, not on his family, but on the whole people of God, the whole world. What an amazing thing. Jesus has kept his promise to God by sharing the love of God with everyone and teaching others to do the same. And now, as one of the final things that he does, 
Jesus prays for us, asking God to unite us all, asking God to unite the whole world. What better time for us to be reminded of being united than right now in the midst of a global pandemic? We're all in this together, right? When we're called to care for one another, to be kind and respectful, to protect our most vulnerable, to support our essential workers and be a faithful community in God's kingdom while still maintaining social distancing, we are in unity with one another and with the world. We are all touched by this pandemic in some way, shape, or form. We are all touched by God's love and creation as well. And so this is God's reminder to us to be together, to be one, to be in this world as beloved creations of God, caring for others who have been created by God. Every time I hear this story and this prayer that Jesus offers up to God on behalf of all people, I think about a quilt. I know there are a lot of folks in our community who like to sew and make quilts and have worked on quilts. I know that the annual quilt uh, raffle as part of our uh, bazaar at Emmanuel is a really big deal, and I will not tell you how much money I spent on raffle tickets for that quilt. Maybe, maybe you should not mention that to my husband. But I bought a lot of tickets for that raffle for that quilt, and um, because it was so beautiful, and I love a quilt, and I love what message a quilt sends to me. Because when you are building a quilt, you use lots of different pieces to put them together. You have the quilt squares, or they're not always squares. Sometimes they're different shapes too. But you have each separate piece that gets sewn together. And then those pieces get sewn onto one big piece of fabric with sometimes filling in between. And then there's more sewing and more edging and all kinds of things that happen to bring these scraps of fabric into a beautiful design or pattern to make a quilt. It's pretty amazing. I imagine if someone just handed you a bag of scraps of fabric that you might not think you could make anything out of it. But if you hand a bag of scrap fabrics to a quilter, I can guarantee you that they can come up with something amazing and beautiful. And they will do it with, with love, which is really amazing too. In my last church, um, Grace Lutheran Church in Bellevue, they had a really strong core quilting group. Now, even though their numbers had declined over the years as folks aged out or moved away, they still got together every single Wednesday to quilt. And I love to take a break from being in my office and working on things to go down and check out whatever it was they were working on. And I saw all kinds of things that were works in progress. And then a few times a year, we would bundle up all the quilts, lay them over the pews in our sanctuary, and I would have folks go around and bless them all before they'd be given away. It was one of the, my favorite parts of my ministry there. And it was one of the things that I enjoyed most was seeing those women and seeing the hard work that they did. But a really special story I want to share with you is the time that I gathered up fabric from my husband's grandmother after she passed. The fabric was really old and, well, how do I say this? It wasn't very pretty. It was sort of that old-fashioned dark tapestry fabric, you know, kind of along the lines of what uh, Maria Von, uh, well, she wasn't a Von Trapp yet, but what Maria uses to make clothes for the kids in The Sound of Music, play clothes. You know how that's kind of fabric that you certainly would not expect to take off of a drape and then make something pretty out of. But we had this big pile of fabric and didn't know what we were going to do with it. I gave it to the quilters, and they combined it with some beautiful colors, and they were able to make amazing quilts. And we were so shocked that on Quilt Blessing Sunday, we walked in and here were these fabric squares of this ugly garment, you know, hanging fabric that was just, ugh. And it was beautiful and it looked amazing. And those quilts went to the local veterans hospital to keep our veterans warm. I love the idea that something that didn't seem so great to me was worthy of being made into a quilt. So, I'm wondering if you're getting that connection too. You see, each of us is like a square of fabric, or a triangle of fabric, or a circle of fabric, or just a piece of fabric. Some of us may be a little bit more frayed on the edges than others. Some of our fabric may be a little bit older. Some of our fabric may have a little bit more synthetic in it than others. 
but we are all so very different. Each and every one of us. We all offer different gifts and skills and talents. We all bring different things to God's kingdom. We are all beautifully, wonderfully made in the image of God. But we're all very different. But each one of us has our place in God's quilt. Each one of us has a purpose. And each one of us is needed to be assembled together by God's love, Jesus' grace and forgiveness, and the strength of the Spirit moving in, with, and through each of us always to gather us together into a quilt that is full of warmth and love and hope and joy and grace and forgiveness and all of the gifts and skills and talents of the world, all displayed in one place. Isn't it beautiful to imagine all of us as part of a quilt? Think about what color or texture or pattern would be on your fabric. Think about what shape your fabric might be cut into. Think about the other pieces of fabric that you might be sewn against connecting to and how you might work together to make sure that your portion of the quilt is strong and warm and sturdy and beautiful. That is what is so amazing about being a part of the body of Christ and being church together in the world is that each one of us separately in a square doesn't do much to provide much warmth or beauty or comfort. But when we're all together, when we are all living that same life, loving God, we can do so much to care for and comfort the world around us. So I want you to imagine yourself as a quilt square and think of all the beautiful designs and patterns that you can be joined to be a part of. Think about the people in our community and how sewn together we can take care of the world. One of the things that I do when I go and visit with people when their life is coming to an end is I offer them a prayer about a quilt because I remember how we are all part of God's quilt. And when I sit at their bedside and hold their hand, I pray with them, Holy God, Wrap this person in your loving arms with the warmth of a quilt. Let them feel its weight like the comfort of your love and forgiveness shown through your Son, Jesus Christ. And let them feel the breath of the Holy Spirit each time it's pulled toward them. That is my prayer for all of you. May you all feel the warmth of God's love around you like the comfort of a quilt knowing that each square is made of the body of Christ and that we each bring something wonderful, beautiful, and amazing, whether we're gathered in person in a building or whether we're each in our own separate homes. Remember, friends, God loves you, and so do I, and you make a beautiful quilt. Amen. Hi, this is Pastor Donna Wright, I'm a friend of your pastors, and I'm going to be sharing uh, a message for the children and the families and hopefully everyone. And this is uh, based on the gospel for this Sunday. It's a song by Ken Miedema, and uh, I'm going to teach you both words and, and motions. So get, get both hands ready. It starts out. Lord, that was easy, listen to your children praying. And then it repeats that. Lord, listen and cup your hand around your ear like you want to hear better to your children praying. And then Lord, send like God is sending down from heaven your spirit. And for spirit, we're going to wave our hands across like the wind. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us. Remember the send, send us love. You can make a heart with your hands. 
send us power, be really strong, send us grace. And for grace, we're going to make a gentle like pat, patting or a petting motion with our hands. Okay, now we're going to put that together with the music. So follow along. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. We'll do it again. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, Listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O oh God, call your people to be one as you are one. Unite your church in the truth of your gospel, the love of our neighbor, and the call to proclaim your reign to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Breathe life into your creation. Guide your people as we explore the mysteries of the universe. We pray for the work of scientists and mathematicians whose skill enriches our understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make your justice known among the nations of the earth. Protect the vulnerable. Redirect those who use violence and greed as weapons. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come to the aid of your children. We pray for those engulfed in grief, those without supportive families, and for all who are isolated, powerless, or afraid, that all may rest their anxieties in your care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage to all who embark on new ventures. Today, we remember especially those who risk their lives to serve in our armed forces. Grant safety to those serving at home or abroad and assure them of your never failing strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, 
We begin and end each day with prayers on our hearts. You know those prayers and hear them, even when we do not say them out loud. Listen now as we lift those prayers to you. At this time, I invite you to lift up to God the prayers of your heart, wherever you are and whatever they may be. God hears you and knows your prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Raise all your saints to eternal life. Until that day, we give you thanks for the faithful examples of those who have listened to your voice and now rest in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive this blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen, friends, just as he said. So go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.